Uh, speaking of disaster, sure. Yes, I've been dying to talk about this. The old ban. I was saying before, you know, we were going to do this a little bit ago. Uh, Tony Hinchcliffe has moved Kill Tony over to the comedy mothership where they take your phones, they put them in yonder bags, they take your picture, they scan your ID. And if you're caught heckling, you're removed from the club immediately. And now they've got your picture, they've got your info, you're not allowed to get back in the club. What I didn't know, you know, Joe's a big fan of hiding these phones. What I didn't know was some of the possible reasons behind it. Um, so we've got this story about uh, some rumors, some gossip about why Joe Rogan might be locking up people's phones at the mothership. Do we have that article or yep, that? Yep, it's in next post? up. Look at this. Listener um, theory. Listener theory. Look at this. It's a little bit more than a theory, I think, right? Interesting info for you guys on possibly why, why Joe Rogan is so strict about recording at the comedy mothership. So I found out that one of my coworkers has been going to the shows. Joe has been, uh, yeah, one of the shows. Uh, he told me that Joe has been doing a comedy routine talking about his whole N-word scandal from back in 2022. And supposedly, during his set, he keeps dropping N-bombs. Now, my theory is that he's so scared of people recording him and getting it out, uh, having him say the N-word again in 2023 so much that he straight up banned phones from being in the building. Okay, it's just a rumor from his friend. He says, his buddy, as he went to the show, Dro is saying, Nigar, the N-word. I can't imagine Joe doing that. I don't think. I, I know, mean, I, I can't just even. can't imagine Joe even theory. risking that. But that would be amazing. Now, remember, I urge everybody to understand, just like you don't have to do jury duty, you don't have to lock your phone in a yonder bag. All you got to do, this is so simple, I thought that you could think of it yourselves. All you got to do is say, oh, my phone, I don't have it. I left it in the car. Because I know you lock him up, so I'm not bringing it in. And then your phone's right in your pocket, and you walk right in, and you film him saying the N-word. Here's another one. You keep a second phone in your sock. You have your fake phone. You're walking around. Your real phone's in your sock. Your fake phone's here. They go, I need your phone. Here you go. You get in. You pull out your phone. Woo. You record it all. <laughs> Please, the first person to get me Joe Rogan saying the N-word, $2,000. If we could get that... Joe's saying the N-word on stage, for real, not AI. No AI, okay? Um, here's another thing that's really unusual about this. Now, I knew that they were locking him up at Mothership, but did you know that Tony Hinchcliffe, supposedly, is any show he performs at, he makes them lock up the phones. So, like, for instance, Tony Hinchcliffe does, you know, all sorts of places. He was just at the Brea Improv. The Improv Comedy Club, who doesn't lock up the phones, as far as I know. But because Tony was performing there, he brought in the Yonder Company and made everybody lock up their phones just for him. So he's demanding other clubs to help facilitate this. And we got some uh, gossip here from friend of the show, Alice Hamilton. Uh, the uh, Aunt Alex, Jemima uh, <laughs> of Red Bar. No, I said that to her thought she was going to flip. Now, Alec, Alice Hamilton is this black girl. Um, I say that because it makes her more legit, I think, as a black woman, to have all these scoops. She's the <laughs> one who's got all these Chris D'Elia scoops. She's always got rumors. She's always outing and exposing people in the comedy world. You could check her out at Alice Hamilton. Alice R. Hamilton. Alice R. Hamilton on Twitter. Here's her latest. Look at this. Tony Hinchcliffe is currently at the Brea Improv, and he's one of the first comics since uh, he's one of the first comics since I've been all up in there, who's using yonder pouches to lock up the crowd's phones. I thought it was just because he's saying some wild stuff, but when I was home on YouTube, I saw that he stole a recent joke from a Kill Tony contestant. Here's the contestant down here. I think I even showed this woman on the show to show how disgusting she was once. Remember? Yes, I think you did. Yeah, I think actually. I even showed her. So here's the contestant. <laughs> so she says he changed up the set, but it's that girl Shelby Morgan's gun joke. Essentially, his remix goes, I recently purchased my first gun. 
A gun's not like having a gun's a lot like having a second penis. So much, in fact, that the first thing that I tried doing with it when I got home was sticking it in my mouth. So that's Tony's version of the joke. Let's check out the girls. I've never heard of a Shelby Morgan before. So here is Shelby Morgan appearing on Kill Tony a couple months before. And I guess she told the joke that Tony's going around town telling now. Maybe Tony thought he made this up. But here it is. It's this girl's joke. Let's take a listen. Make some noise for Shelby, everybody. Did you know that in Idaho, you can pay $200 a night to stay in a giant potato? In Austin, you can just ask me nicely. I don't know why you would include that. Stings a little bit. Stings a little. Why would you include this? I do I try to practice you, self you, love. Her. Sometimes I spit in my own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I have a boyfriend somehow, uh, but I don't like everything he takes me to do. Uh, sometimes he tries to take me to the shooting range, but I just don't enjoy it. Because for me, shooting a gun is a lot like giving a hand job. Uh, like most women, I'm not very good at it, and I would really rather just put it in my mouth. <laughs> okay. And there's Tony sucking it all up, <laughs> going around town with his version of that. Could Tony be locking up people's phones so that he could get away with wow. using their material? I don't know how he thinks he could get away with that. But again, if you could get footage of Tony doing this joke that we could line up and compare with this woman... There will be a big prize. So please do not give your phone to the guy. Give a dummy phone. I'll cover it. I'll buy you guys dummy phones. Uh, maybe. <laughs> so uh, very cool. But the Kill Tony gang has been having some problems. I kind of want to ask Red Band about this, my buddy Red Band. They've been having some issues there at the comedy mothership. Uh, you know, and we kind of predicted this when they were doing their show. Uh, at the Vulcan. Is that what it's called? The Vulcan uh, bar? Yes. Right? It's like a bar with bands. That's what, you know, we were used to seeing for the last couple of years there in Austin. And it was a bar setting. You know, there was a bar. The crowd was lively. They were able to walk around and drink. It was a big hang. All the comics who were on the show were in the crowd. The whole place was packed. Everybody's drinking and having a good time. However, now they're at the Comedy Mothership with all these rules, right? You're walking in. It's almost kind of like going to watch a teacher give a talk now. You're more in a theater setting. It's not as rambunctious and fun. And it looks like the fans are starting to notice, hey, this show ain't the same here at the Comedy Mothership. Uh-oh, you guys thought this would be huge. But now we're here and it's kind of not the right setting. So I don't think we did this. Let's take a look at some of the incidents that happened this week with the old band, Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Hernandez, and of course, Jetski Johnson Peluso or whatever her name is. Remember the old band led by Jeremiah? Now, this is great because we're also going to be kind of covering Jeremiah here, <laughs> who I've been after for years. Jeremiah is uh, uh, repulsive. Uh, in every way. I mean, I've seen so much of his stuff. He's not only as weird as it gets, I believe he is uh, dangerous in a way. I've always been after him. He used to be the leader of the old band and uh, they would do bits. They would do characters and the crowd loved it. They loved it so much that when to Kill Tony moved to Austin and they didn't come with and Tony got a new band, the Kill Tony fans were furious, okay? They wanted the old band back. They hated the new band. They can't stop talking about the old band. But at the very same time, Kill Tony kind of exploded as a show and got tons of new fans. Probably more fans. They got more new fans than they ever had fans, okay? So their old audience who loved the old band is like a tiny percentage of their new audience now which doesn't know the old band. So uh, Tony and Brian have it in their head that everybody wants to see the old band, right? Because they complained about it for six months. <laughs> so he brings back the old band. And that's what we're going to watch today. Yes. The new audience don't like the old band. 
No, no, they don't get it. They think just what we think. So wait till you see this. This is from the most recent app of uh, Tani. No, this is Kill Tony 605 with Kevin Ryan and H. Foley and Giannis Pappas. Is that true? The RU Garbage Guys. They couldn't make me more sick. And this Giannis Pappas couldn't be more boring. So you've got uh, them. I hate that big, fat Kevin Foley. I saw Danny Woodward, one of our main listeners, uh, went after H. Foley. Is that his name? H. Foley? Yeah, he's getting mad. Yeah, hold on. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, see if you could find a... (laughs) That he went after him this week. And yes, please, scare the living bejesus out of this H. Foley because these are you garbage guys. Let me pull up a picture of the two of them. Uh, oh, so, no, it wasn't H. Foley. It was Zach Amico. No, he went after H. Foley, uh, too. This was recent, very recent. Uh, I just saw it with my own eyes the other day. I'll show you these are you garbage guys. Let me pull up a good picture of the two of them. All right, this is a beautiful photo. Exactly what I was looking for. Let's see. Here they are. And you've probably seen them all over your goddamn sub box, right? Is it just a miracle that these two idiots... The most boring two guys in the world are everywhere now. Well, we're going to look into that, too, because I think they got a little marketing power behind them. I think they just signed a new deal. These boys is trying to get famous. Uh, I'm starting to notice this a lot. The comedians, every hopeful comedian, every comedian out there started to kind of realize what's going on here and the potential that they have to be very rich and pretty famous. You know, we've seen Tim Dillon, Tom Segura, Burt Kreischer, Theo Vaughn, all these guys who get into the Rogan world, they're huge now. I mean, Theo Vaughn's getting millions of views per episode. These people are filthy rich now. So you're starting to see all these other comics go, I want that. And they're signing up for whatever thing Theo Vaughn signed. You know, you got Starvros, you got the RU Garbage guys, you got this Sam Talca. Go to their Instagrams. Every one of them's the same. Same format, same clips, market, market, market. They're on all, po- every day. These two are on everybody's podcast. There's something fishy about it to me. It's more than just marketing. We'll look into that deeper later. But first, let's open this episode of Kill Tony with the old band. Here we go. Go after Kevin H. Foley or whatever his name is. H. Foley. Go after him. Here we go. Oh, kill merch. Yes, yeah, I got to talk merch. about. We'll show you there. Uh, they just launched. Fans have been dying for it. I guess they haven't sold merch in a long time. Fans have been clamoring for merch from Kill Tony. So here it is, an announcement. Kill yeah, merch. Link. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go that over that later, I think. Uh, kill merch for 1823. We're going to show you the merch. We're going to show you what the fans thought of the merch. It ain't good. Here we go. Kill Tony, kill Okay, let's start the show. Here we go, folks. The old man. Got another one for this. Let's get involved. They're coming. Here's everybody to our wonderful Tony. I gotta come back next time to see how that works out. Here he comes. Uh, He looks amazing. Hey, this is Red Bank coming to you live from the Comedy Mothership here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Get up for Tony Hitchcliffe! Are you guys ready for the best fucking night of your lives tonight or what? That's a big promise. Best fucking night of your lives. We'll see about that, Tony. Oh, we need to show that quick Shane clip after. We never showed that. What do we got? That one with him talking to Tony. Oh, that's so good. Yes, please. Let's show it right now. Okay. (laughs) Let's show it right now. Uh, That's what I mean. Guys, I'm overwhelmed. I mean... (laughs) we probably put 200 to 300 things every week in the show notes. We only get to a few of them. There's so much. It's never ending. So I apologize I for this, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to get everything in. I don't want to miss this stuff too, because it's pretty good stuff. 
look at this. Um, okay, 143.30. This is Shane Gillis. 143.40. This is from a couple uh, episodes ago. Shane Gillis, the leader of the comedy. But did you know that Shane Gillis is the leader of the comedy world now? Everyone you ask, Joe Rogan, all these guys, they talk about Shane Gillis as if he's changing the face of comedy, as if he is the most legendary. Did you know that? Yes. They love him. It's insane. I had no idea. 143 what? I mean, who else do they have? He's pretty That's much what the it best. Is. Who of else the do they have? <laughs> yeah. Tim Dillon and Shane Gillis are the leaders of comedy now, who everyone looks up to and uh, compliments. 143 40? Yes. So what you said? 42 30. 142 30. 142 30. Okay. Very different. 142 30. Now, this is great because <laughs> Shane, because everybody keeps complimenting Shane and because he's the leader of comedy now. He's got a kind of a new confidence going on where he's willing to speak his mind more than he used to. Remember, this is the guy who got canceled. He was going to be on SNL. They caught him saying chink. They canceled him. He made the news. And because of that, he's here. So if you watch Kill Tony at all, you would see that Tony does this thing. Like when he brings up uh, the Chinaman. Who's the Chinaman? Uh, uh, Jules Hans Kim. Hans Kim. He'll do something like this. Guys, this next guy taking the stage is a force of nature. One of the best comedians in the world. He is going to make you laugh harder than you've ever laughed. There is no defeating him. Are you ready for the best comedy you've ever heard in your lives? Okay, he'll do that. And boy, what pressure, huh? I mean, this guy better be funny. You just promised me the world here. <laughs> And he does this with a lot of his guys, like he does it to David Lucas, William Montgomery, he does it to Hans Kim. And it's never the truth. Hans Kim sucks. I'm sorry. He's terrible. He's open mic level. You know, he's opening for Rogan now. And Tony just wants to own someone very similar to Crowder. He wants to have Hans Kim 15 years from now be like, I owe my whole career to Tony Hinchcliffe. And he wants everyone to know it. That's his only agenda here is being able to be like, wow, Tony really has an eye for talent. Uh, but he doesn't. He just picks random, horrible people and pushes him and pushes him and pushes him. Shane Gillis decides to step in and put an end to this. You want to hear this? This is great. Thank you, Shane. <laughs> Possibly have another Perk 30. I've had three, dude. I'm stuffed. <laughs> Watch this. I could eat 200 Ambien. I could eat 200 Ambien right now. Fucking Pelosi couldn't do a thing to stop me either, I'll tell you. Oh, wait, is all the compliments like before this guy set maybe? Like Tony, because maybe I want to show them all the compliments okay. first. So it's probably before this guy set. This is another guy in Tony's sights. So maybe I could catch that right Go to here. like 139. 139. Or no, 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 no. Sorry, this camera is earlier. around a lot. Here, yeah, I know. Wow, this guy's on the stage a lot. Okay, let's try here. Let's see what happens here. Hey, it already, you'll it get an idea. Worked, man. There you go, you fucking rapist. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. What the fuck is that look, you weirdo? Oh. Smell like baloney. Okay, watch this. Good one, Red Band. Oh, <laughs> She's gonna joke. Red Band! Wouldn't you rather have me sitting next to you? I'd never treat you like that, Red Band. Replace kill with Mike. Or Tony, you see that every time. He always takes out his nervousness on Red Band. It's really unfair. All right, let's see what happens. This is where he's going to overly compliment some hack comic. Like baloney. Yeah, he's trying, to, he's trying to be all coy, act like he doesn't like her now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even going to book her. Hold on. All you right. Like, you like, what was your favorite? Yeah. I know you don't. Yeah. The great and powerful William Montgomery could not make it tonight, everybody. He got stranded in Las Vegas, Nevada. He has a crippling Adderall and gambling addiction, and uh, he's going to be back tomorrow, unfortunately. But, you know, this place has been hiring, uh, much like 
its predecessor, the Comedy Store, it, they specifically showcased and hired all the funniest young talent from around the city. And because those types of people are available just anytime we want, we decided to give you a real special treat in the place of Here William Montgomery. Real special treat. What you're about to see is true. Okay, look at this. What you're about. Listen to this. Part. Special treat in the place of William Montgomery. What you're about to what see. You're about to see is truly a guy who, well, right now, working a door shift right now is truly going to continuously never stop moving up in the comedy game. And you're going to remember that you were at this show the night that you saw him, perhaps for the very first time. You may know him already. A local legend. Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Rocket. If, that, if I were behind that curtain, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. You're going to remember. Hey, guys, I'm the work. best comic in the world that you'll remember for the rest of your lives. So this guy gets up. He doesn't do that well. All right. Now let's go to the time code. Yes. What was that? 142. Uh, 142. Okay. 142. 40. Really Shane's going to step in now. Okay. Here we go. Wise man. Thank you, guys. I'm Casey Rocket. Wow. Hey. Wow. 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 So the guy does well. He does well. And the crowd is giving him a standing ovation. However, Shane heeds a warning. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Casey Rocket. Holy It wasn't shit. that good, Trish. An absolute fucking firestorm. No. Jokes. Constant movement. <laughs> Extreme entertainment. You are such... Actually, this is one of the door guys at the Comedy Mothership, and they've got this thing, this romantic thing, where at the comedy store, Mitzi, uh, you started out as a door guy like Ari Shafir, and then you become famous, right? Tony and Joe want people to talk about them like that eventually. Oh, man, you know, this was just a door guy from the comedy mothership, but Joe and Tony saw something in him. Now he's one of the biggest comics. In the so they're rushing it. They're pushing it, <laughs> forcing it. When it's not really the case, they're not Mitzi. Mitzi did know how to pick a winner. This was a real business back then. This was the Sunset Strip, baby. This is not the same. They are, uh, in, uh, they're, they're uh, pretending to be this this uh, historic woman, <laughs> and it's getting a little sickening. Actually, it's to the point where it's a little nutty. I want the Shores to step in and sue Rogan <laughs> because he's stolen all their guys. He's basically ripped off the comedy store. He's ripped it off, and he's taking it as his own and, and taking it away out of the state to Austin. I want him sued. And the Shores should also sue Whitney for depicting their mom like that in that show. Oh, my God. Yeah, Whitney was on this show called The Accused, <laughs> where Whitney played herself, but she got raped at the comedy store. And the woman they had depicting Mitzi was like, let's keep this on the DL. Don't you want to have a career? You bring up this rape. Everyone's going to think you're crazy. Let's keep it under wraps. And it like made her out to be like that kind of person to show... <laughs> But it's like, why would you do that to Mitzi, you stupid Whitney? <laughs> Ashley, ask her about that accused set and if I could get uh, behind the scenes footage of the accused. And a DVD box set. DVD box set too. And I love Whitney. I'd love to take a tour of her house, Ashley, if you could make that happen. Fly me out. Me and Whitney spend a weekend together at her house getting to know each other. That's a serious demand. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Shane Gillis is going to scold Tony, Tony C. Hinchcliffe. And Tony doesn't get talked to like this very often. An original, such a force. Thank you. Thank you guys. He's a force. I got to go back to the lobby. <laughs> He's a force. I'm on the clock. <laughs> I'm on a riff-based salary. It's 100 riffs an hour. It's okay. like six coins or so. It's coin-based. It's no riffs, no coins, eight coins, eight riffs. You know how it is. You guys get it. <laughs> You Going are best. the shit. You are working right now. Uh, Shane, what do you think about the Let's young buck, I KC love Rock? I love it. I saw him, uh, was it last night? Yeah. Two nights ago? Yeah, it was hilarious, too. Oh, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. It's Chris, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, watch. It's great. You got to stop complimenting people 
so hard on the intros. It seemed like it worked. You, you got to stop complimenting people so hard on the intros. Okay. <laughs> Tony gets nervous. What do you mean? Stop complimenting people so hard on the intros. It seemed like it he worked survived. out. He survived that. It seemed like it, he just got a standing ovation. No, I know. No, it wasn't, it wasn't for your fucking intro. Well, I know it wasn't from the intro. <laughs> no, I'm saying, you got it's a tough, you can't, when you bring someone out, you can't go, this guy is the next big thing. You're going to remember this forever. Yeah. <laughs> that's Whoa. a huge amount of pressure. Yeah. yeah oh, that's how- Tony no happy. <laughs> Tony no happy. <laughs> He's very Crowder-esque. All right, let's hear some more. How good he is. Like, we yeah. know that he's going to fuck Guys, yeah. you're doing exactly what I said not to do. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's not getting through, is it? What I'm saying. No, it's, that's all. That's, all right. that's old New York rhetoric, what you're Whoa. speaking. <laughs> Dude, I've been in New York for two years. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. In any matter. We Whoa, knew Kate. Shane, keep going with it, Shane. You're on the right thread there. We got your back, Shayna Putnam. Now, Shane <laughs> dresses horribly. Have you ever seen these sports clothes Can he I wears? Get Shane in Can like we a give him a makeover? Sweater he does not need cozy. to be dressing like this. This is terrible. You do not look good in beer clothes, okay? If he dressed like a nice papa, I would probably like him. Trust me, the college idiots are still going to love you, okay? You can still get the sports, barstool sports guys. You don't got to wear this. <laughs> what is this anyway? Notre Dame? I don't know. <laughs> well, she's not from America, but you got to stop wearing that. Those shirts are pathetic. He should Casey try adding go- a scarf to cover his tits and gun. Follow anyway, him. yeah. I Casey, you're great. Okay. Thank you. Very good. So look at that. Tony getting scolded by Shane. Let's go back to episode 605 and let's see how the audience likes the old band, the new audience. See how the new audience likes the old band at Kill Tony. Yee-hoo! How about one more time for the great Brian Red Band, everybody? Hey, everybody! Fuck yeah. Welcome to Kill Tony, brought to you by the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose. So let's see where he introduces this band here. You've got H. Foley. Oh, look at H. Foley, this big pile of fucking shit. Look at this guy. And these guys, by the way, go silent most of the episode. Hey, can somebody draw me like a far side style yes. comic where I don't know what the joke is, but the image depicts Tim Dillon and H. Foley standing there looking. It's at like a giant Hawaiian shirt yeah. store where the there's giant. Hawaiian shirts hanging at the store and they're huge, like tent yes. size. Tim Dillon, H. Foley. <laughs> and what are they doing? Uh, they're both they're, hold yeah, up maybe giant. holding them up. Maybe they're shopping Rumors. them. And the joke is up to you. I just want yeah. to see that image. Yeah, I think that would be good. They're uh, I, exactly the type of guys who would be in a comic. I mean, like imagine that. how big that would be if he took it off. That's a big shirt, man. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of fabric that he wants for the same price. You know, they all want it for the same price as the amount of fabric I get. It almost like it would be so much bigger off than on. So I much bigger. <laughs> so yes. I need to see I, these you could blanket off. a picnic table with that yeah, <laughs> easily. So I despise this H. Foley. There's something about a fat guy doing his hair that really is eerie. You know, like you're <laughs> so fucking fat, like you're definitely going to die from comedy. But you do your hair like you should see. He like really does his hair as if he's a regular person. It's very weird. And then meanwhile, this co-host has no hair. This, and again, this is like Tom. Uh, this is like, who are we showing? Dave Landau. You're fucked <laughs> if H. Foley dies. There is no life after it. When H. Foley goes, and it could happen soon, these big guys, they die. The big comics die. And we know H. Foley is going down death's door right now. He's walking down that hallway to hell. You're going to be left with nothing. I hope you understand. You know, these guys are making $77,000 a month on Patreon. And poor H. Foley has to split it evenly with this guy, Kevin. What is his name? Kevin. Is it Kevin? Uh... We don't even know. Imagine how much. And the resentment is building. H. Foley 
lucked out. He went on everyone's Kevin podcast. Ryan. Kevin Ryan. Not very memorable. No, not memorable at all. But H. Foley really lucked out. He went on everyone's podcast. He had them all come on his, and now he's in. He He's in the scene. And now he's getting 8,000 Patreons and growing, and he's got to split half that money with that bald fuck who he knows. If it were the other way around, and if it was just this bald fuck, there'd be no money. So <laughs> Foley is probably getting upset. He wants that cash. Once that cash starts pouring in, there's going to start being little problems. I wouldn't be surprised if this guy gets booted out. I hope. Okay, let's see what happens here. Hell yes. We are doing this shit. Welcome, Giannis Pappas, your first time on the show. First time. We're going to have so much fucking fun. Yeah. Giannis Pappas does the Giannis Pappas show. Hour. Hour. Giannis Available Spencer. everywhere. Uh, Kevin Ryan. He's another guy in the machine now. They found the manager. He cut the deal with the devil. Take 60%. I don't care. Just make me famous. And they do it. They got all the tricks in the book, these management companies. And they put them in the same program. You know, so now Giannis is in this mix going, I saw Theo Vaughn's getting a million views. He's making millions of dollars. I got I to gotta shoot my shot. And they're all shooting their shot right now. You'll notice it's making me sick. They're all going for it now. Going for it a little too much. I think it might backfire very soon. All right, so let's see. Tony's going to introduce the old band where he thought this would bring the house down. I mean, he thought this was going to be like the most epic episode of Kill Tony ever. And an H. Foley, of course, of the Are You Garbage podcast. One of, yes, sir. One, Thank you, buddy. One of my favorite podcasts I've Throw ever shit done. At him. And you guys have been on this show before. Giannis is first time. If but, you go to an H. Foley show and throw a double hamburger at his head and film it, I will give you $1,000. No, that counts as assault. Okay, well then, throw it next How to him. just throw the image of a double hamburger, but it's actually made by like a hologram kind of... It's too absurd. What about a fishing pole with a hamburger and you lead him out the door <laughs> and into the road where he gets hit by a truck? You do it. Uh, yeah, what can we legally do to H. Foley? <laughs> Think of some options here today. But uh, we're going to have a fucking blast. Giannis, you might not know this, but over... Look at his hair. You see what I mean about his hair? That's too much the dew. The worst thing about him is his mouth by far. That's hey, the Wait till you see. One. We'll try to pause. Like, hey, 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 like I Papa. Would even, the weight is number two to the mouth. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely the mouth that annoys me. 200 You'll comedians see. signed up for the opportunity to be on this show 200 tonight. 200 comedians signed up. And guess what? They're not allowed in the club because it's limited seating. You know, there's only so many seats and they want to sell each one of them. It's not a bar like the Vulcan that they were in. So the comedians cannot hang out. So where do the comedians go, you might ask? Well, in an alley behind the club. Yes, they are forced to stand outside. 200 comedians. For hours, in an alley, just standing there, all the comedians in this dirty, disgusting alley with garbage cans, um, and they have to wait till they hear their name called, and then they run in from the alley. That does not sound like fun. It also doesn't sound like something the city of Austin really would want. 200 people in an alley, two times <laughs> a week, every night. Something bad's going to happen in that alley eventually. Um, Someone in the chat says, H. Foley has borrowed and never returned my neighbor's tools and still interacts and talks like a used this? car salesman to the same neighbor, never I, mentioning the tools I, again. I, I need to know more. I hope this is true. <laughs> this is just a comment from our chat. Dave Foley never returned my neighbor's tools. <laughs> if this is true, and I believe it, if it's not true, you're the best comic that we have <laughs> as a listener. You're the best comedian. I can imagine that. Same. He's like one of those guys. He's one of those shitheads where, you know, and that's why, again, the fanfare he's experiencing right now is so backwards because, yeah, this is a guy who won't return your tools. You know, he's a real fuck up. <laughs> and uh, I just don't like him. Giannis, decent man. I don't need him. And I'd like to scare him. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. But 200 people in the alley. Now, the alley, and I'm not saying anything here, but the alley looks very similar to the road in Charlottesville that the car plowed down. So imagine 200 people in a street. No, no. 
I'm just saying, it looks very similar to a Charlottesville type of scene. <laughs> Does anyone have a, what is this, a Dodge Charger you need? Mustang? What do you need? I'll buy you the Mustang. That seriously is dangerous. Uh, it though. is I mean, dangerous. You can't have 200 like people standing outside like that. Sorry. What if you can have a line, and the line needs to be inside within 10 minutes, uh, a, a, a half the hour? Isn't busiest street in Austin? Could well, the they're in the alley. Driver just like turn down the alley by yes. accident. To and they're blocking the something? alley. Here's the big thing: that alley needs to be open. It's the same thing. You can't park your car in an alley and go fuck off. You can't have 200 people blocking an alley because, yes, what if a car needs to come down there or an emergency vehicle? Where are they going to park? 200 people aren't going to all step out, out of the way for a car to go by. I mean, it's absurd. They've turned the place into like a festival grounds back there. This can't be legal. Somebody call the city and report this because then they'll have nowhere to go. Where are you going to put the 200 signups if not the alley? They can't stand out front. The city won't allow it. I don't think the city knows that they're in the alley yet, but believe me, that alley must be cleared. I cannot have one of my Austin. And also, alley. the energy of the show is way lamer now that they all have to stand outside in the alley. Yeah, the, the energy. Place, there's no energy. They were all kind of in the back drinking, waiting to get up, and there was like a shot of them all waiting there, and they could like hear what the other comics were saying, and it was like a whole different thing. But it was now, a whole different vibe. Like now, yeah, now they're on stage. This place, by the way, the comedy mothership looks like a school auditorium. I mean, it really has the same vibe as your school stage. Remember that gay ass <laughs> fucking stage in your school? Like right below it's Tony, like that. Look at the curtain. Expect there to be a wood parquet floor yes. instead of yes. And on the side is a teacher's piano, a wooden teacher's piano. Yes. And also, it's in the gym. It's being shared as the basketball court. Yes. It's very like similar to that. Bouncing a ball. I uh, my junior high gym was the theater and the basketball court mixed. I don't know if anyone else had that junior high though. And we used to jump on stage during gym class and go behind the curtain and I'd steal all the microphones from the theater. <laughs> and they were sure SM58s, the stage mics everyone used or whatever they're called. Those were like 119 bucks at the time. You know, I was in a band and we needed gear and that's where we got our gear. We stole it from the school. They had no security cameras. Those didn't exist back then. <laughs> you had to be rich. Schools are poor. The guy who accused Foley of the tools stealing was like sorry guys that was a typo i meant he's definitely done it however ah. prove, but i love using sorry guys that was a typo hey and man you mind if i burn your tools today i'll give him pitch i promise you can accuse anyone on instagram of anything you want in the comments as long yeah. as when they respond just go it was a typo yeah now this <laughs> fat fuck is so beat tired from all his new marketing that he wants to do uh, so that he could climb to the top. What these guys don't understand is they're not all as good as they think they are. And they're spreading themselves so paper thin. You know, this guy's doing four podcasts a day, then his podcast, then stand up every damn night. God knows what's happening in between. Twitter, Instagram, uh, whatever the hell else he's doing. Zooms. And he's exhausted he is exhausted. He's not able to even enjoy his new life. And it's never going to end because once you start this marketing campaign, you're locked in. You can't slow it down. So uh, he's really, you know, he's sitting in his own shit right now. Okay, let's introduce that bean. Right. Wow. They are loaded in the back alleyway right now. Lo you hear I'm that? not kidding. They're loaded in the back alleyway. He's talking about that crowd of uh, the comics. I don't know this, but over oh, great. 200 comedians signed up for the opportunity to be on this show tonight. Wow. They are loaded in the back alleyway right now. I'm not kidding. They bring their own drinks. They play dice. Illegal. They make friends. It's fucking incredible, the energy in this alleyway. Report it. It is a precious thing. That'll probably be ruined by somebody soon. Uh, oh, so it is illegal. Illegal, I say. I yell that to many men. <laughs> so I like busting somebody in like a civil like uh, ordinance <laughs> bust. I love that. Like you doing something wrong with in regards to the city? I saw that. You just walk around town. Yeah, look at people's license plates, and if they're like a month expired, you report them. What's with these expired plates? One less car on my street for parking. I saw some guy on Twitter posting that he was doing that. He was like, caught another one. 
yeah. expired plates by three months. I'm like that guy <laughs> who uh, screams at people for not putting their shopping carts away. Except I don't care about the shopping carts. I was just going to say, what? You never put your carts back. Exactly. But I'm like him with other stuff throughout the city. <laughs> I don't, I actually, this is what I do with my cart when I'm done. Shut my trunk and I go. <laughs> and then I run Same. in the car, I get the hell out of there. I take it back. That's nope. crazy. For those of you listening to the audio version, that was me taking the cart and pushing it as fast <laughs> as I can. You, The idea is you want to get the hell out of here before you hear it hit something. So you want to shut that door and get that seatbelt on always um, and get the hell out of there, <laughs> you know, but do not waste your time putting it back. Okay, please. But there's a guy who has to come. You care about that guy? I can't even look at the cart boy. He's so disgusting and covered in zits. I just couldn't leave it out there for my own sanity. It could, it could roll into your car. By accident. Wouldn't even scratch it. My car's it built in tough. in place. It's a thing with wheels. It can't be loose. It has to be in place. I wouldn't give a shit. If I had to back up, I wouldn't care if my car was surrounded by carts and I had to plow through them. <laughs> They're not going to hurt your car. They're plastic now. They're not going to do anything. Not always. Well, trust me. If your car gets hurt by a cart, you're a beta bitch. <laughs> uh, I could just see a mass <laughs> shooter after a bad set. But hopefully they use Gel Blaster, available in stores everywhere. Uh, nobody gets hurt. So really, he's got a company called Gel Blaster, and they forced him to put their product. It's a children's toy that shoots gel balls, like paintballs. I don't trust it. I wanted to get a Gel Blaster and start shooting up the place. But uh, I don't want whatever residue it is. I know it's probably a no-residue item. That's the beauty of the Gel Blaster. But no, I believe anything that shoots a ball is bad in the house. So, but look, he's willing to even put this on his, his sullied. Right? Imagine if I just put a product here and I'm like, well, they paid me $2,000. So the shot's ruined by the product. And he even made it the Kill Tony gel blaster. Somebody send me a couple of these, though. I saw a video with a guy playing his drums with a gel blaster. It sounded amazing. I'm not kidding. There was this dude and he was doing the bass and the cymbal. And then for the fills, he would go... <laughs> But it was like rapid fills because you're shooting 100 balls a second. That's cool. Yeah. And I didn't see too much residue on his heads. I saw the <laughs> tops of drums. I own a full drum set, for those of you who don't know, which is pretty fucking cool. Like, I'm one of the coolest people in this whole fucking city. I, I mean, owning a drum set <laughs> is <laughs> cooler than having a pinball machine, which I'm getting. <laughs> I don't know where we're going to put it, but I do want a pinball machine. Once I have that, pinball machine, drum set, and Coke machine, professional Coke machine from the public, you know, like you see at a store, then I'm set, you know, like Big. Remember the movie Big? He had a Coke machine. Now that. It's amazing. Imagine having a cigarette vending machine fully stocked. Ooh, I love Old machines. We saw one the other day. It was a Coke machine. It had a dial to choose your soft drink. It's a drink selection. Drink selector. Yes, selector. Yeah. Drink selector. I would really like that. Oh, okay. It's the best. Let's get to this show. Watch what happens. We're going to pick it apart. Um, very, very exciting. If I pull their name out of the bucket, they get 60 seconds of stand-up comedy time uninterrupted. You know their time is up and you're the sound of a kitten. That means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear, which... No, it was not a Coke freestyle machine. That's exactly what I'm not into. Coke freestyle is a new thing. You see it five guys. That's disgusting. This was a Coke selection. It was like a 1960s Coke machine. It had a big dial. <laughs> it wasn't freestyle. You couldn't mix Mountain Dew with Coke. Okay, here. Interrupts their set. Yeah, that's just if they go too long. Anyway, after their time is up, I interview them. We have a bunch of fun. We all meet them together. Anything can happen. The whole thing is improvised. Ugh. You guys ready to start tonight's show? We are. Well, 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 before we do, I have a very, very, very special announcement. How many of you have been listening to this show or at least gone back in the catalog from two or three years ago and earlier? Huh? How many of you are really longtime fans of this show? Yeah, I would say about half the audience are saying they're longtime fans of the show during this uh, survey here by Tony C. Okay. Or at least they're clapped. They probably just want to clap. 
yeah. answer him with a clap. They're going to join in. One earlier, huh? How many of you are really longtime fans of the show? Well, you newbies out there, you might not know this, but we used to have an entirely different band. They would come out in full characters. They would commit to these characters uh, throughout the show. Sometimes they would change characters throughout the show. Legends of the show. When we moved to Austin, they all have Legends. families and things. They all stayed in Los Angeles. And, uh, but tonight is a special, special night. So joining the new band, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the former Kill Tony that band, everybody. Big. Here they come. Jesse Jetski comes out first, and she's dressed like Red Band. Hey, everybody, this is Red Band coming to you live at the Comedy Mothership. Give it up for your host, Tony Hinchcliffe! Now, Joel Berg Joe Amendez <laughs> comes out dressed as Tony Hinchcliffe. So you're going, okay, I'm starting to get it now. Foley's starting to chink out. Foley's starting to get excited here. <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> fuck yeah, fuck yeah. No eye contact or I'll give you cancer. <laughs> We're moving the show to North Korea. <laughs> They're more compliant there. Foley's got his mouth wide open as if little fish are getting scooped up as he goes through the ocean. <laughs> this isn't even a bad... It's always... I didn't catch him at a moment. Watch. Guys, you know how this... Uh, I could watch his fucking open mouth all day. Let's see if we could get it here. We're moving the show to North Korea. They're more <laughs> compliant there. Hey, he has a lick. Tongue. Guys, yes. you know how... He scoops up fish. Okay, so they're imitating the band, and this seems funny enough, right? So the audience thought. This shit works. Every week I have one of my funniest friends come out. Tonight is no different. Please, put your hands together for Joe Rogan! Right. Jeremiah comes out dressed like Rogan. It's a pathetic attempt. Nobody does Rogan like I did Rogan on Halloween. <laughs> no. Everybody looks terrible. Here's Jeremiah looking like Barry, the guy from Barry. <laughs> and he comes me. out and he does, you know, this is at the comedy mothership. Everybody there knows Rogan front to back. We should play that new clip from Rogan's dad, too. That's okay. Crazy. That's crazy. Yes. Um, everybody there knows Rogan front to back. So a Rogan impression should be a slam dunk here. This should be easy, simple. Let's see how it goes. Takes out a mini Traeger grill. Kicked an elk. He now has a grill. Those are, that is elk and jalapenos, I do believe. Those are real jalapenos. Let's Draw not the make classics. too much of a mess here. Now he's taking out a, oh. Oh my goodness. a pool glove. He, and he's going to do some field. billiards. He's put on a pool glove and he's lining up his shot. Oh, wow. Red Band is left. That is Joe Red Rogan's Band's diet. <laughs> to be nice. Yeah. With a grill. Oh. oh. He breaks the pool cue. He just broke oh, the pool thanks, cue Charlie. for those of you listening to the podcast and not watching. It appears no one to be to the this. real Joe Rogan. Okay. If he was the lead singer for REM or. Uh, <laughs> It appears to be <laughs> REM stands for ready to eat meat. Okay. Rare elk meat. Okay, so the joy the crowd goes. Now, back in the old day with the old band, the crowd would just die. They knew this old band. They knew their type of humor. They knew their humor is kind of like pathetic, but that's what makes it funny, right? You had to be there. You had to know them. But it doesn't seem to be working so well with the new audience. Rogan's club has two stages, but clearly Rogan is stage four right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
still trying to chew through that first piece of sausage over there. Let's go, Jeremiah. You got to do the bit. Oh, Rogan still talks. a little more. Post swallow, second round. Joe Rogan, welcome to the show. I always listen to Tony about swallowing. Oh, there you go. Very good. Yes, indeed. I'm gay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yep. You sons of bitches! Okay, don't take advantage. And Red Band looking uh, a little bit healthier than usual over there. <laughs> what do you got, a sound effect? <laughs> oh, oh, just what? like the actual Red Band. <laughs> yeah. Very Perfect. accurate. Very accurate. Perfect. Okay, so the, uh, they're, they're laughing now. The novelty is new, but it wears off very quickly. Let's go to some of our favorite time codes of the band bombing. So let's see here. What do I got? Uh, Kill Tony with the old band. Let's go to 830. Oh, no. Let's go to 1925, right? Or you can go to 2520. 2520. Okay. We're going to watch uh, Jeremiah do a pretty bad Rogan impression. What was that code again? 2520. 2520. Okay. This is where it begins. This is where the crowd really starts going, oh, uh, they're not very funny. I cook. What else? Uh, like editing videos sometimes, I guess. Oh. Eh. Jeremiah. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. What is your favorite apex predator? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, Joe Rogan, with a great well, question. Favorite... Do you like the bear? <laughs> 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 All right, Joe. All right, Joe, relax. We know you're... <laughs> I'm going to say the police. <laughs> okay, was that what we wanted to show there? Okay, so that's Silly. not Rogan. Rogan doesn't do that, and the crowd was like, a little freaky. All right, what's no, our let's next? Let's do one? a little detour at 3850. Okay. 3850. What do we got here? This is David Lucas's set. Ooh. We have some more controversy, don't we? <laughs> yes. And Jules caught this. So we got hundreds of thousands of people tuned into this experience here. Here's David Lucas, everybody, right? He's killing it, right? Well, David Lucas has been accused many times of taking jokes from Twitter and using them in his Kill Tony sets. It's been a big thing for many years now. Uh, it started out with, wow, he's just telling street jokes that everybody in the black roast community, the bebop hip-hop roasts, he's using all their jokes. Okay, so all these whites are laughing, thinking it's his stuff, but it's really, you know, black Twitter type of deal. The black comedy world, which none of the whites are involved in anymore. So he's just lifting everything from those black bombs coming over and here. And I finally caught one with my own eyes. Jules <laughs> caught one with her own eyes. Nobody else has reported on this, I don't think. So we're going to hear him uh, do a joke, and then we're going to see, did he steal it? Let's find out. Right here, uh, 3848? Yeah, I think Good. so. Them niggas ain't about to trick me into being gay. That's all I know. Man. <laughs> I got an eight-year-old and a three-year-old daughter. Uh, my eight-year-old, she's retarded as fuck, man. Uh <laughs> The other day, she going to ask me, uh, Daddy, were you sad when you were a slave? I'm like, bitch. <laughs> I was born in 1990. Ask your grandma that bullshit. What the fuck is... Okay. Very funny joke, right? Little black kid comes up to his dad. Dad, what was it like being a slave? Very funny. I love hearing the word slave. <laughs> However, is it too funny, maybe? Let's find out. So we're going to go to... Uh... Is that in here or is it a it's separate It's the link note? right underneath. Oh, the link. The Twitter link. Okay, yeah. let's see this. So this is from March 26, 2023. Not that long ago. Not that long ago from a guy named a I... Girl. What is this? Oh, it's a girl. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It's a girl and it's I-T-U-M-E-L-E-N-G. Itu Nadia. Okay. Love Not David her. Lucas. So her joke here on Twitter is, my niece just asked me, did you cry when you were a slave? Sis, I was born in 97. It's like the whole thing. That's literally almost word and for I word. Just saw and they tweet, both like, just came up with before. this. Yes. So they both just came up with this joke. I don't know. I'll read it to you once again. My niece just asked me, did you cry when you were a slave? Sis, I was born in 97. All right. Now let's go back to David Lucas's. So you could hear it one more time. Let's compare. This is a bust, by the way. <laughs> this is a bust. Them niggas ain't about to trick me into being gay. That's all I know. Man. 
I got an eight year old and a three year old daughter. Uh, my eight year old, she's retarded as fuck, man. Uh, the other day, she gonna ask me, uh, Daddy, were you sad when you were a slave? I'm like, bitch. <laughs> I was born in 1990. Ask your grandma that bullshit. All right, a couple of little add-ons, but that's word for word, if you ask me. That's a steal. It was like at the top of my For You page or something one day when I went on Twitter. It was like the universe wanted me to bust him. And you found it. Jules from Red Bar. What are the odds found that? Um, (laughs) I'll say this. um, Those people, (laughs) right? (laughs) They steal. Um, I don't know why you got to sell. You'd be very funny, but that's a hard, hard job to do. You know, he comes up with uh, 60 seconds of new comedy now twice a week. He's Jeez. got to do and he's got to impress everybody and keep it better than the next week. So, yeah, what do you think? He's sitting there writing every day like Dave Landau? <laughs> no. So that is a bust. You could share that with everybody. Cut it up. Make it nice. Keep the quality the same. Share that with everybody. and. Uh, but people have said that he does this like millions of yeah. times. So Why can't he be held accountable nice. for this? What what What's it going to take? Completely. And this is it. Joe Rogan's club. Joe Rogan made himself famous for the second time by going after Carlos Mencia for stealing jokes, including Ari Shafir's. And Joe Rogan basically started this whole podcast career from that incident. So if anybody shouldn't be putting up with it, it's Joe Rogan himself. Meanwhile, David Lucas is in here stealing people's jokes all the time. Now, feel free to clip that and send Wait, it this to... this is the video you still want. Oh, yeah, I'm I know. Just showing that again. Feel free to clip this segment, send it to this uh, Twitter. Here's her name again. I-T-U-M-E-L-E-N-G. Send it to her. Go, we caught this guy, David Lucas, stealing your joke. Let's let her do the, the heavy lifting, okay? She'll be... She'll be furious! So, okay. Um, And hopefully I didn't say anything bad about their heritage. (laughs) If I did, it was just simply out of absurdity's sake. We're just trying to mimic these right-wing a-holes that we're after. There you go. I'm on their team, of course. Okay, so here's, uh, yeah, David Lucas stealing. Very good. I like that one. Um, You could go to 4020. Yeah. This is more of just the audience kind of getting tired of the band. Wow, 4020. They're just, this is when he does his little roast sesh with David Lucas, who they love. So now David Lucas is the best. David Lucas is the best guy now, for now. Okay, so let's see. This is where the band's really going to start falling apart here. (laughs) The fuck y'all got all these niggas on stage for, bro? <laughs> I ain't never seen white people congregate like this, nigga. Unless they had hoods on with a burning cross. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I guess we need a bigger stage. I said bigger. I said bigger. Yeah. Ooh. The jokes are... I love when the jokes are rolling. You could clearly hear an audience rolling, laughing. Then someone... Ch- this is very similar to Crowder's Dead. And then it <laughs> stops. So here's Jeremiah, and I get his joke. He's saying, I said bigger, I said big, like, not nigger, which, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the heritage, those girls still might be watching. Stop, tune out, tune out, uh, the black girl that we sent to you, tune out. Um, I'm just quoting Joe Rogan. You know, Joe Rogan had an Edinburgh scandal, so Jeremiah thought that would be a funny joke, but the crowd did not get it at all. <laughs> I guess we need a bigger stage. I said bigger, I said bigger. Yeah. Mm. Jeremiah, nigga. Hey, hey, <laughs> this motherfucker look like a creation from the army. Like the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate Whoa. soldier, nigga. Like he's he can't be shot with regular bullets. Ever. <laughs> you can only kill him in his right leg, nigga. Ever. <laughs> you have another version of me up here. I don't know if you know that. That's another Tony Hinton. That nigga look like a Puerto Rican Pee Wee Herbin. Boy, your ass out of here. <laughs> Your ass is out of here with that bullshit. So the band thought they would be the main funny <laughs> attraction tonight. You know, Oldberg's looking around like, oh, what am I supposed to do here? We're not trained for this. You know, uh, and they're, they're getting a little scared. And they're dying at David Lucas, then every time a member of the yes. band speaks up, they like go silent. Yeah, let's hear that. Which I actually think they- the band's jokes are better. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's just not working though. They're not doing it right. Here. Pee Wee Herbin, boy, your ass <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Your ass is out of here with that bullshit, nigga. Your motherfucker got a, you got an Oompa Loompa wig on, nigga. I don't like the look of this. <laughs> Turn now, your mic- Joel's mic's not even on. 
So Joel was supposed to do the comeback. Now no mic. I go, nigga. Turn the mic up, boy. Let this. Uh... Yeah. Ooh, and he ends it with a never mind. <laughs> we got to keep that mic on yeah, whenever we have to do. The band's I would starting ask to you bomb to turn now. Around and face me, but it'll take five minutes. <laughs> Slight oh, laugh. Oh shit! I ain't even gonna respond to Jeremiah. That's why my back to that nigga, bro. <laughs> wow! I ain't gonna even respond. And Jeremiah knows a lot of this is kind of true. You know, they're not doing so well. They're starting to feel the heat. There shouldn't be a guy behind the guy, and then another guy behind that guy. That's also. too many guys behind the guy behind the guy. <laughs> Look at that! It's, it's the insane. evolution of the uh, <sighs> whatever you want. Forget it. Um, yeah, a guy behind a guy behind a guy. And Jeremiah started, look at that. That's pain. This is psycho pain. This is a creep. He should have to shave his head like that if he wants to be such a creep. Go around like that. <laughs> back this is disrespect, disrespectful as a motherfucker. I got my back to Jeremiah like that. Hey, David, if you, were a, if you were a slave, you'd pick cotton candy. <laughs> okay, we got one. <laughs> That's a good one, Oh, Nate. my God. This nigga, oh, my God. This nigga oh. look like a grown-up Elian Gonzalez, boy. Shut your dumb ass up. Yeah, when I was in that inner tube, I thought I saw an okra whale. <laughs> okay. Stop, just stop, bro. You better... I, I heard just fucking, stop. That fucking triple booster to live in L.A. got your ass. Whack as fuck, nigga. Ooh. I heard that... Uh, I heard David Lucas didn't talk to Michael Lehrer in the last days of his life because he never met a vegetable that he liked. <laughs> Ooh, no, no, no. We do not bring I mean, up the late, great, suicidic Why didn't Michael Lair. Why laugh at that? Because Michael Lair is a recently deceased, <laughs> by choice, pro-choice comic that uh, killed himself. And people just, eh. You know, Michael Lair uh, talk kind of shuts down a room right now <laughs> at the Kill Tony Club. Okay. Oof. Anyone know where Michael Lair's grave is and where I could find it? Let's take some people on a ride to his grave. On <laughs> a ride? Yeah. <laughs> Please, I would really like to visit Michael Lair's grave. If anyone has uh, details on the location of his site, please let me know. <laughs> I'd love to leave some of my belongings there to show my appreciation of his life and times. Thank you. All right, so the band is starting to bomb. Let's see this. Michael Lair in the last days of his life because he never met a vegetable that he liked. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Nigga. Go get another booster and try again, nigga. This mo- Go get another. Oh, so they're saying you you boosted comics, you faggots from L.A. You got the vaccine. You're boosted. That's like the new disc now. Oh, man, this nigga boosted. Yeah, he's sweet. He's sweet. You're going to find out who else is a little sweet in the gas tank. We've got some sugar in the tank. You'll find out coming up next. So, uh, yeah, Jeremiah does not like... Everybody laughing at him. I mean, not Jeremiah, this uh, Joel Berg, Joel Ermendez. Okay, so the band's starting to get a little less confident here. Okay, you can <laughs> skip ahead. They, yeah, what do we got go next? To, um, so they change costumes a bunch of times. Jeremiah came, comes in yeah. as like feminist Stacy. Yes. Ooh, one of his most wretched characters, feminist Stacy. Oh, you could just go to 59 for Jeremiah doing a nice yell. I love it when a guy does a yell. 5900? Yeah. All right. Jeremiah's going to do one of those over overacted yells that makes people go, ooh, man, sit down, man. Okay, watch this. So now he's dressed as feminist Stacy, and the idea is she's a raging feminist, but Jeremiah performs it so poorly, especially tonight, uh, and the crowd is just not into it. Here. Give us, a, give us a little something special. You must have seen uh, something crazy lately, right? Dude, Feminist so Stacey. there's this band I like called Little Big. There's a little person in the band, oh, and uh, I've definitely, because of her, looked at midget porn recently. Ooh. It's called Little Person Porn. Get with the times, you bitch. All right, All right. All right Stacy, relax. You're really amped up over there. Uh, Bryant. Because Whoops. Rogan didn't go over as well as I planned. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was going to do better at the comedy mothership, but this crowd likes Rogan too much. I'm sorry. Ooh, ooh. Oh, we're breaking the fourth wall now. Women have periods. All right, Stacy. All Stacey, right. I'm thinking about how it wasn't going over well. Oh, dude, this kid is fucking ugly and weird. 
Okay, now you can go to 142.00 for the best part. Okay, 142.00. This is the best part. I remember this very well. Let's get there. It's a long hike to 42. 142.00. We're almost there, guys. Here we are. This is the part where it all comes crashing down. Name some more things excitedly that you're looking forward to. Now, Tony is dressed as a milkman now. He's over. I mean, Jesus. Jeremiah, milkman. (laughs) They have the same build. Yes. Um, uh, Joelberg is who now? Like a 50s husband. A, a 50s husband. Okay. So these are weird characters. And these then, are 50s characters. And then Jesse is like the wife. Okay. So Jesse is playing like a 50s wife. He's the 50s husband. And Jeremiah is the milkman. And this has nothing to do with nothing. These are just random characters that they came up with thinking this would be a hoot. Kids characters. So these characters, they don't have anything to do with comedy. They don't have anything to do with, you know, any inside joke or nothing. It's just some gay ass theater bull that these three fruitcakes came up with. And it does not go over well. The seeing in heaven. Peeps. Uh, those chocolate eggs with the with the really yummy yolks inside. The Cadberries. Cradberries. Oh. Cradberries. Yeah, right. Cradberries. Cadberries. You're saying that wrong. Germ. Oh. Blackberries. Joelberg. Cradberry. Cadberries. You mean? What else do you think is going to be in heaven waiting for you, William? Probably an Easter basket. I cannot wait till Easter. It's going to start. And that's actually when I'm going to finish watching Flipper. It's probably over the Easter break. Jeremiah's. Uh-huh. I get two Gearing weeks up. off. Okay, Milkman. Milk. Uh, my heaven, maybe a milk delivery when the husband's not home. Uh- oh, lights. Or laughs lighter than skim milk. What did he even say? Me? No, Jeremiah. I don't know. But it got <laughs> light laughs. Let's hear that again. Probably over the Easter break. Uh huh. I get two weeks off. Okay, milkman. Uh, my heaven, maybe a milk delivery when the husband's not home. <laughs> All right. Uh- oh, God. Now here is there this jet ski Johnson. From- she's gonna come in and save him, right? Of course. She's gonna jump in. She's part of the band. We gotta save this. So let's see how this plays out. Maybe a milk delivery when the husband's not home. All right. He's saying uh, he fucks me when my husband isn't there. Unprofessional. That's kid comedy. <laughs> so because, remember, this is some sort of weird improv troupe now where he's the milkman, she's the 50s wife, he's the 50s husband. And they're alluding to an affair <laughs> going on between the milkman and the wife. But why? <laughs> As if this is going to make us die laughing we're adults i'm 58 years old for god's (laughs) sakes i mean this is kid humor so let's see this gets really bad all right he's saying Uh, he fucks me when my husband isn't there we're having an affair bill billingsley (laughs) fuck you (laughs) oh kid comedy unprofessional so the band, you know, Jeremiah is like shamed out of his mind back here. He really thought this was going to be like his big, uh, another break for him. I mean, this was big for them. And they can't afford to fly out to no Austin, you know, for this. So it's really going bad. This gets even worse. <laughs> I wish you would. <laughs> you have always been a fucking slut. William saving it. <laughs> I cannot believe you just said that shit. (laughs) Holy shit. It's going to go into rapid bombing. I haven't been fucked in months, William. Why? Because my husband sucks. He's fucking his secretary and he's an alcoholic. She needs a little strawberry in her milk. (laughs) (laughs) You might be that strawberry. Look at at William's going. We for real with this shit. (laughs) Let's back it up. Let's hear this. It's going to go even more. I believe there's a few more rounds. They're going to try with all their might to pull this thing back together. It never does. It sucks. He's fucking his secretary and he's an alcoholic. She needs a little strawberry in her milk. (laughs) You might be that strawberry. She wants you to flip her over. 
<laughs> she wants you to Netflix and chill. <laughs> cool. <laughs> William, oh. any parting words before we let you go? Giannis, you've seen William before, right? Or yeah, yeah. Okay, wow. That was a nice disaster by the band. Really falling apart there. And uh, that was only we like call two that the extendo bomb. The <laughs> so we were watching this and you know, we were hoping and wishing, but we didn't think it would come true. But it did. The fans hated the old band. Like look at some of the best uh comments here and i think we're just going to pull up the instagram here yeah and scroll through and there should be some <laughs> nasty comments in here so here they are uh let's see the show is better without the old band constantly interrupting for attention one of the top comments 121 likes uh we love this show but the last couple shows have been rough am i the only one that feels like this the old band stole the show and not in a good way lol Yikes. Um, let's see. So Old band ruined the flow of the show like usual. Ooh. That episode was bad. The old band ruined it, especially Jeremiah Watkins. That dude isn't funny at all. Send this to Jeremiah. I need him reading every negative comment. Let's get together, pick out every negative comment from here to YouTube and everything. Send it a nice care package of cut out. Physical comments to Jeremiah's mailbox. Old band ruined tonight's show. Nothing they said or did was funny whatsoever. Please never invite the old band back again. Yep. Jeremiah sucks. Never again. Trash emoji. That episode was bad. The old band ruined it. Oh, yeah, that's the one you read. The old uh, band literally made the show unwatchable. The highlight of this episode was David Lucas <laughs> calling it out for what it was. Yeah. Their hero. Wow, look at this. Jeremiah sucks. Yeah, yeah that's the one you read. I only like the nostalgia of the old band. I never realized how much more I enjoy the new band. The old guys are just way too much. Stepping on jokes, being loud, dragging things out too long, constant interruptions. It's a shame the old band ruined this. The guests were great, but the old band bombing at the start ruined, uh, start, soured the crowd. Wow, look at that. Can't stand the old band. Show is so much better without them. Constantly interrupting. <laughs> this okay. is a lot of comments. It's a lot. Uh, let's see. The old uh, not sure how many more of these I could watch. Last night was a shit show. <laughs> I mean, if I had comments like this, you'd never see me again. I'd be out. I'd be uh, bowing so out of private life. Tony showed Jeremiah these comments and was like, wow, look, I gave you a chance. I gave you a chance and you blow it. Um, so I really want to make sure that Jeremiah, Surprise, especially Tony didn't take control and save that. <laughs> wow. Let's see. Please don't ever bring the old band back. Really not it at all. Too many people on stage. I miss the old dynamic. But I think most of the reason why it's way shittier is because it's at the comedy mothership and not the vault. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a big, what there's a lot feeling, of factors. And they're blaming it on the new band or the old band. Let's see. Uh, I don't understand Tony's approach to the show. It's about people getting a chance to do stand-up, not three subpar improv dorks trying to step on everything said. Tony isn't very smart. <laughs> I mean, this is brutal. Jesus. Brutal. And that's what you get when you cheat to win. Uh, let's see. Uh, why is Jeremy tag? Okay. Uh, let's see. Old band was annoying as fuck. Uh, this show is so much better with the new band. Again, this band. This is a very sensitive topic for the old band and the whole Kill Tony experience. So <laughs> please send this to that old band. Only Jeremiah, actually. The other two don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, why the heck isn't Brendan Schaub on the stage? Oh, my God. Fuck the old band. <laughs> I miss the old. Okay, well, you haven't seen it yet. He's saying I can't wait to hear it. Uh -oh. Well, you'll see. Uh, old band to retin. No. Old band was trash. Please never again. Um, all the positive comments are just people thinking it's going to be good, but little <laughs> yeah, but do they know that it's the worst. Uh, so very, very funny. I love when something happens like this. I hate, I look at this one. I fucking hate those unfunny jerk offs in the old band. Best part about Kel Tony moving to Austin is leaving those hacks behind. I love this. And I love how everyone's like, here's my take on the old band. They stink. Kill them. It's like, wow, you're really being clear. You know, you're really being 
straight to the point. Uh, old man was a gag. Deal with it or fuck off. Okay, that's one for the old man. And let's not let Jeremiah think that that, you know, repairs everything that we've read here. Okay. They'll be like, see, people liked it. No, they didn't. That was a retard. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if I could find one more very funny one. I really just love negative comments. Okay. That's fine. I think these are the oldest comments now, so we're not hearing. Oh, give me one more. Give me one more. Why does Tony Hinchcliffe look like he's about to pop and have a heart attack? I've noticed that recently. Dude is so red and strained looking. I'm sure there's lots of drugs and partying going on, but fucking A, man. Blood pressure looks extreme. Okay, yeah, and I have noticed, you know, Tony's on something. I think he's doing the steroids and the booty, like they said. Someone, there was another rumor about Tony that back in the green room, they caught him doing a double dose of steroids in his ass, injecting it, right? Didn't we have a scoop like that? So I think he's Seems taking it too far. He's, far trying to get, he's trying to get too big and he's not doing it the right way and it's going to backfire. It's not going to work. You know, I am steroid free. 100% steroid free. I am getting that checked out though and looking into that. See if I can get on the most extreme dose of steroids that could possibly be given to me. See what happens there as an experiment. Okay. Well, that is, that is it for the old band. Give them a round of applause. You know, the Kill Tony merch bomb, too. So they're getting hit hard on uh, everything. Here's some comments about the new Kill Tony merch. I'll show you it first at killmerch.com. This was supposed to be big. Killmerch.com. Wait till you see this. So they were like teasing this for months and months and months. Everyone thought it was going to be epic. Here's the gang. Oh, why is Andrew Santino in the header? This is killmerch.com and it's Andrew Santino. You didn't need to put that in there. What the fuck? So here is the merch. You've got this disappointing, disappointing t-shirt. It's just... Uh, Did you notice it's two guns where the ends are mics? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. They've had that for a while. Two oh, guns. I don't think I've ever seen that Guns, before. microphones, clip art. That's fucked, man. And then you've got a knife as the eye. It's like too much. Either one or the other or none would be good. And the Kill Tony logo has always been really, really ugly. And this is an awful shirt. It's a full front print. Kill Tony. It's got a tagline under it. I mean, it really looks like a... Sure, you'd get for free at some sort of um, uh, industry, uh, you know, like when you go to an expo, grab a shirt and you throw it in your duffel and you get, or the tote, and you never wear it. So they didn't like that one. Let's see what else they got here. It gets worse. This one was weird. The Kill Tony, it's called the Kill Tony Sponsor T-shirt. And it's this Kill Tony NASCAR logo. And then it just has all the brands that sponsor them on it. I don't know if they thought this was like streetwear, but it didn't come off that way. And the fans are like, what the fuck, dude? You're advertising on a T-shirt that you're selling us? You know, it, it really doesn't even go with the vibe of and Kill also, Tony. Is so that, that on the front? That's, that's on the crazy. front. Yes, <laughs> on the front. That's even, a full like, front. Put it on yeah. the back. So let's see what else. You got this terrible hoodie again. With the kill. Oh, look, down the sleeve, established in 2013. That looks bad. And it's very low energy. I mean, low effort. It's just they threw the logo on a bunch of cheap garments, right? They didn't really do anything. You know, you've got the beanie again with the logo, a bunch of other crap. And the fans are not having it. They actually hate the new merch. Let's read some of the Reddit comments. Here's uh, the top comment there that day. This was one of the first comments. Anyone check out the merch site? It's online now. Jesus, it's really uninspiring and underwhelming. Hopefully they'll have some more creative merch down the line since the website just came online. And then another guy goes, uh, I was going to buy one, but 50 after shifting? I don't know about that. Yeah, and here's another one. Uninspired and underwhelming were the exact words that came to my mind, too refreshed way more times than I'm comfortable admitting for such lackluster products. Wow. Not good. We should do a merch collab with Red Band only. Wouldn't that be nice to do a really cool, cool fashion piece? And it can just look exactly like your other shirts, but it can say Red Band Scars Club. Yeah, Red Band <laughs> Scars Club collab. Wow, that would be really epic. You know, let's do this. We're going to take a quick break. Did you still want the Joe Rogan? Yeah, we'll do that when we come back. We'll take a quick break. Got to go to bed. 
I have to make. Uh, we'll be right back song. after this. Right I don't now? have it. Go uh, throw me the break. Put on music. We'll see you soon. Don't go anywhere. We're really quick. <laughs> 